Screening sequences is often done using bioinformatics tools that perform similarity searches, align two sequences together, or maybe even analyze common patterns found in the queries and references that are used in your database. There's no best tool or pipeline, and each has their own unique trade-offs, their own unique set of measurements and results. Typically, there are trade-offs between power, between speed, sensitivity, and specificity. And while tools don't share a common measurement scheme, there are some common identity metrics like query coverage and statistical measures like e-value. There aren't any standard thresholds for these. And so a lot of times you'll have to experiment to find which parameters work best or which thresholds will provide the best results for your use case. These can oftentimes vary between the parameters used, the database, and the tools. And so it really does depend on what particular use case you're going to be using it for and, and how it works within your pipeline, within your unique set of sequences that you'll be screening and within your own unique set of reference sequences that are going to be in your database. Sensitivity and specificity can have complex effects on the rates of false positives and negatives, to, depending on the tools used, depending on the databases, and uh, on the use case as well. Sometimes small changes can lead to large changes in the other. So a small change in sensitivity can lead to a large change in specificity and vice versa. Because different tools rely on various heuristics to make them faster, there, there can be these nonlinear relationships between how one affects the other. In general, the specificity and sensitivity are inversely related. With higher specificity, there's a higher chance of missing something leading to a false negative, while with a higher sensitivity, there is a higher chance of matching to a sequence with low homology or a sequence that's not actually related or similar, leading to a false positive. As, as much as possible, we want to minimize both. False positives and false negatives are in a natural tug of war, and so there is a natural challenge of balancing the sensitivity and specificity of different tools so that we can reduce the amount of false negatives and false positives together. Reducing false positives will reduce the burden for review. And so the less manual time that's spent, the more likely you're focusing on the most important risks. And reducing false negatives will reduce liability and overall improve compliance, making sure that you're not missing anything and that you're doing the best job, the most responsible job to protect uh, the business or your research and, and make sure to do it safely.